My name is Melissa. Melissa? How you doing? I'm fine, Melissa. How you doing today? Well, uh, I'm stuck out here in Kenzo on my birthday. I'm 33. Um, I got into an accident on March 20th. I recently lost my leg. I fell on the train tracks on 13th Street. Um, I believe I, I was a little sleepy. I've been homeless for a long time. I've been struggling out here. Um, my house was recently set on fire also. And uh, I fell on the tracks March, uh, March 20th at 13th Street, lost my leg. Um, I was, my leg wrapped up in the train and I was dragged about 16 feet. My head was banged on about three or four pillars and nobody was there, nobody heard me. And um, nobody's ever really here, out here, uh, to notice it's three, four o'clock in the morning during the witching hour when uh, people are hungry for drugs and people have no money and we're all getting attacked by demons and, and evil spirits. There, there isn't anybody here with a camera to tell me or notice me, you know? And um, I just want to put the word out that you may see us without legs and you might see us rotten right now. Imagine if the food tomorrow that you ate all of a sudden just started making you sick as anything, which it's kind of kind of starting to. It gives us cancer. So we go to Whole Foods, right? We go to places we trust. These, these, this isn't a place you can trust that, but the drugs I need. Unfortunately, I am in a situation where I, I need chemicals. My body can't sleep. My body can't wake up on its own. So when I go and put these drugs in me and they put the holes in us or they make us so tired we can't pay attention to our surroundings or they make us want to take stuff from grandmothers and kids. I don't think of the consequences until something bad happens, unfortunately. But that's the situation we're in, you know. I, I, you think I can get a job tomorrow? I would love one and I'd be probably the best employee. I don't, I, I, I'd be grateful for any kind of chance, but I keep falling deeper and deeper into this addiction. What's next, my arms, my eyes? Now I'm even more vulnerable. People say, oh no, she'll get a settlement. I had to file my own police report. I'm afraid for us out here. Who's gonna raise the next generation of kids? They're already terrified, COVID. They're terrified of us. They're terrified and divide and conquer. And that's what's happening. It's easy to look at our problems and be like, oh, let's get away from them. Everybody's addicted to something. Clothes, attention food, sex, addicted to something. Just, if I take a Suboxone every day, it's, it's, it's better to, oh, she's only taking a Suboxone, she's not putting a needle in her, she's not stealing from the stores, that's fine. But I'm still chemically bound to whatever it is, which means I can't prosper in a different light because I'll always have that, that disability, you know? I'll always need that one thing. So if there's a chance anybody can maybe come together and we can all work together, maybe make some kind of rehab where we all, some people scrap, some people do wound care, and we all work together just with the misfits. We are strong people. And the strength is in everybody. And it's a light through God. And, and we're hiding it right now through the ugliness. Melissa, first of all, let me say happy birthday to you, dear. I'm so sorry you fell on the train tracks and lost your legs. You're very young. You shouldn't be going through this. But that's what drugs do to people. Were you high when that happened? Yes. And that's what I see people on the train tracks all the time, like on a platform standing and they nodding off. Yeah, yeah, and you don't think of that. You don't think of that. I've seen people getting rescued, but that one time, it's just that one time, certain time of night, nobody was there. Well, thank God thank you're God alive. Works. It could have been a whole lot worse, right? Amen. Amen. So thank God for that. So that's your, that's like a, a breaking point that should be for you, Melissa. What's going to be your breaking point? I think this is it. Um, I just got into a shelter, thank God, a week ago. Thank God. So uh -huh. now I'm working with um, trying to get my prosthetic and uh, get onto a program. I just got to work on insurance things. Mm -hmm. Once I get my insurance done, I'm going to get into a program, hopefully methadone, something. Right. Work. Cause look, I I could almost stand and dance, and it, this happened just in March. You know, it, the strength that I found in me, I didn't even know I had, just to move my body. Mm -hmm. So to get off of these drugs and get away from this madness, I gotta right. work on it a little. But I know it's in me somewhere. Right, it's in you. You you a warrior for sure. Yes, she is. So let's talk about 
the first time, what was the, how do you get involved with drugs? Let's start off with that. Well, uh, I had a, a older boyfriend and I was like a runaway. My older boyfriend, you know, wanted to make me comfortable because I was nervous. You know, I was nervous to be with him and I was about 17. And, uh, you know, he started me sniffing dope and he's made me feel so comfortable, I let him do anything, you know. And then after that, he just, I got addicted and shooting it looked like fun. And when you're that age, you just grab onto anything like a little kid, you know what I mean? You don't know it's hot until you touch it. Mm. Let's talk about, let's talk about your household. Paint us a picture, what was your household like growing up? Uh, my mom, she was a bad alcoholic. She, uh, she used to whoop my ass. My mom was real bad. She uh, eventually died, uh, aspirated, choked on her throw up. My dad was a hardworking garbage man. He just was, he was home when he can be. He used to do the laundry. He, my dad took care of us as best as we can. Eventually he got into an accident. He was hit by a truck and uh, he was bound to the hospital for a while and it was just me and my brother. So it was chaotic. You know, I took care of my brother, but I was a drug addict by the time I was like 22. Where's so. your brother now? My brother is still with my dad and he doesn't get high, thank God. But he has alcohol fetal syndrome. So he's 26, but he's mentally about 18. He's a strong guy though. He's a great skateboarder. Just with my dad. How do your family feel about your situation? I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I try to, uh, you know. I did a lot of bad things to my family, I suppose. They just- Burned a lot of bridges? They're, they're too old, too sick, too tired. Got you. Let's talk about school. Middle school and high school. What was the highest grade you completed? Um, I did dental assisting. I uh, dropped out of high school, but I went back and got uh, my GED. I did dental assisting. Um, I had four years clean. That's when I got my apartment. It was recently uh, burnt down and my husband also passed away. He was stabbed on the streets two years ago and he caught an infection and died. And that's when we saw the infection starting to get big out here about two years ago within mm. that summer. Right. And um, since then, it, about three or four years now, I've been back on, the, right. back on the wagon. How long did it take for you to get in the shelter? For my leg, I had a, for my leg to get almost. I've been on the streets for over four years, but since my leg, I guess they saw me around and they were just like, this girl's gotta get off the, Street. She's been in all these detoxes, all these rehabs around here. So they know of me. So when they saw me, they were like, let's get her in right. when they could. And they did. And I give Philly that much. Absolutely. So now out here, what drugs are you primarily addicted to? Uh, heroin and crack cocaine. You know it's no more heroin. It's all Fetty and Trank. Heroin is out the picture. And Trank is a evil kick. When I'm telling you, it's like a, a bees in your head, monthly shit fest <laughs> it doesn't go away the kick doesn't seem to go away do you snort smoke or shoot shoot uh, dope or whatever you want to call yeah, it, it the caca <laughs> <laughs> and i uh the poison smoke the which it's not even crack anymore either there's something called bath salts bath salt that's what they're giving people yeah they're they're big if you would see it from back in the like if they're big but it's like all filled mm. what's numbing. what's a day in your life look like out here 24 hours well now, because of this, I go around, I panhandle, or I'll try and find like weird little things to sell. I used to be able to like clean houses. I used to clean houses, $10 a room, wipe, wash cars, babysit, dog walk, do a bunch of weird stuff like that. Hey, what's up, bro? You all right, bro? I used to what? take care right? of people's kids, dogs. <clears throat> mm, okay. And now I, I have no hustle, really I don't. And uh, I panhandle now. Panhandle that stuff? And it's looking like it's maybe Ten dollars, like every two hours, if because everybody's in a wheelchair now, they look at me just like another junkie, you know. Right. They feel like they're feeding the monster. Hmm. What all have you lost due to your addiction? I lost my family. I lost my leg. Lost my house. Lost my husband. Lost my dignity in a lot of situations. Do you have children? No. Right. right. Thank God. Huh. If I did anything right, I mean. Um, Probably like my, my dude getting stabbed up, getting robbed. The minute you make a come up, you know, you got to watch your back. You better get it in you before they get it in them, you know. Mm. Uh, they would, people watch you out here. It's a big thing where motherfuckers yeah. watch you. You're noticed the minute you get a dollar. Mm. 
you know, so you, you better eat before you get leave the restaurant or you're not leaving with nothing. Like, yeah. and being in, a, in a, a wheelchair, I mean, people have tried to roll me into garages, try to act uh, like they're trying to help me. Come here, little girl, take shit. Uh, Let me help you and, and literally take money right out of my shirt, almost rip my shirt right off me. Dollar, you know? <clears throat> so how do you find out about Kensington? Who told you about Kenzo? I, knew, I, I grew up knowing about, uh, like the New York Philly area. Yeah. I was back and forth through like little homes, aunts, okay. uncles, so I knew about. So how long have you been on the streets now of Kensington? About another three years. That's a long time, right? Yes, sir. What advice would you give to somebody younger than you? If you didn't pick it up, don't pick it up. The, even the weed guys has something crazy in it where you don't believe it's the gas anymore, you know what I mean? <clears throat> it should be a plant, it should make you feel the same all the time. If you don't pick it up, don't. If you can get yourself busy, get into even helping people, that's what we're supposed to do. Help anybody, older, younger. Try not to, because drug addicts are very selfish. We do suck a little from the, but we don't consume as much as we, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We don't hurt nobody. Right, right. We're not as bad as you may think. We just look a little rough, but in, in reality, we're human. We're human. And regular right? people who are on drugs, they're worse than people who are on drugs. So, you know, just a society stigma thing that they put on us who have been involved with drugs, who are still involved with drugs. We're like the worst people in this world to them. And that's not fair to us. And we get treated that way. Mm -hmm. exactly. And our record get messed up. We come out, it's hard to get a job. It's hard to get a, in a, a place. So what do you expect us to do? Every, it's like a exactly, cycle. Exactly. And especially going to jail, we could go all into that. Mm. You know what I mean? I have a good little record myself. What are some of your charges? <clears throat> Mainly shoplifting. Um, Nothing like too, too heavy, car theft, mm -hmm. shit like that, you know what I mean? What's the longest time you spent in jail? <laughs> like uh, nine months, I guess. All county time, never went to prison or nothing, right. but I couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't. Jail is jail to jail me, right? Jail. Prison or no jail, you still don't have freedom. Amen, really though, and it, and it's stigmas. As soon as you get out, you can't get ID, all that, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> right, right, we you about know. to be done. All right, so now when you out here, how do you stay safe? Run. Me. Oh, you okay? You, yeah, God bless the brother. You no, know I'm playing. I'm going to start taking care of her, though. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Right, right. You need a partner like, out here, right? Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. You, you know the girl that was out here in the wheelchair named Danny? Danny. What yeah. happened to her? Everybody's asking. I believe, honestly, because uh -huh. you would hear if she passed away. I believe that they may have, like, 302 her to a point where she was using the bathroom on herself. Yeah, I think that was like a health concern and they just took her in. I think they had no choice right. at that point. All right, so we about to wrap things up. So let's get off topic and we done, okay? Sure. What are some things you love most about yourself? I'm strong. Uh, I, I'm unique, I like music. I could come out with something different every time I think of something, you know what I mean? I, I have a cool personality. I get along with everybody. And I, I love the universe. I love God, I love the humans, I love the strength in people that they may not see, that I could see, just them paying their light bill today, you know, is ex That's it's awesome, awesome to me. Right, Life right. is amazing. The wind blowing my hair away, like I can't see it, it's there. You know what I mean, it's helping me breathe. Awesome, awesome. I give back carbon monoxide. I don't even give what the, the world gives me every day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's how it all fits, it's beautiful. I love the earth. Do you have a favorite band or artist you listen to? Uh, favorite, favorite band. I like uh, all like rock music. I like everything, but mostly like uh, <clears throat> Sam Cooke. Sam Cooke is my guy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sam Cooke. That's my guy. Okay. Now, Actually. do you do you have a uh, a favorite season of the year? Uh yeah, fall. Why? Because you see things like start to die and rejuvenate again. You know. Nice, right? It comes right, right back. It's right. It's just. What are yeah. some of your favorite foods? Uh, Chinese food, pizza. I like all food. I mean, shit. Right, not, you're not picky? No way. <laughs> you know what? As okay. homeless as I've been, right. <laughs> you know, I'll eat the shoes off your feet. No. When, when you was a little girl, what, you, what do you want to become when you grow up? I wanted to be a vet or an astronaut. Why? I always just thought the moon was cool. Animals, you know, they can't tell you they're hurting, so to help them, it yeah. mean something. Do you have a spiritual or religious belief? I love Jesus. Where do you believe you'll go when you die? 
Amen. Amen to that? You know it. I'm a child of God. He, he's, he's holding me for a reason. If you could fly or be invisible, which one would you pick? Invisible. Invisible? Why? <laughs> just to, uh, you know, just do ghostly things. <laughs> just do ghostly things. Scare a couple people, but I wouldn't hurt nobody. Gotcha, Grab gotcha. a couple things that I can't get. <laughs> Are you currently in a relationship? No. What no. do you What do you look for in a partner? Safety, security. Right, right. Anything else? Money. <laughs> <laughs> you keeping it real. If your friends or your family see this video, what message would you like to send to them? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. And I hope this doesn't hurt you seeing me like this, but just know that you guys gave me the strength of life to go on, and there's nothing you can really do at all. And if you had three wishes, what would your three wishes be? That my father, brother, my family have everything they need. Uh, that um, whoever's, uh, whoever passed away, that they didn't suffer. Whoever passes away don't suffer, and nobody has to see anybody suffer anymore. And, uh, and that homeless just didn't exist. Just everybody had somewhere of shelter. Nice. What do you think needs to be done to help with the, with the crisis out here? You really want to know? Yeah, from your perspective, sure. I think if the, the cops got a little more involved without taking our freedom, but like, you know what I mean? Like getting high in front of the school, just stomp out our drugs, make us stomp that. Like we'll be a little more mindful. Like, there's no mindfulness in, in a lot of uh, the drug addicts. Like they think it's really okay to just shoot up, have a needle in our ear and walk around. Like mm. that shit ain't cute. Mm. Walk around with a needle in our mouth, might bump into somebody and great poke them. All right. You never know somebody running from something. Mm. You just walk into somebody, you know? Facts. So I think if they just put a little more, they're trying, they're, they're posting up a little more, but they're, I don't know about, I'm not agreeing with that, like the cops all the way, but I'm just saying that just to put a mindfulness into like, you can't just do this. You can't just do that. Right. And you can do this and you can. There are a lot of people in this world who judge people who are struggling with addiction. What's your message for the world? We're human. We struggle just like you. We need to eat just like you. And the things that we need are a lot less than you may see. You may think that we need a lot, but you put us in a little shelter, give us a little job, and we, you take half the problem away. We could support ourselves and just have running water. <laughs> You'd be surprised how a lot of us will get off the streets and out of your face. Great. AML family, I want to tell Melissa thank you so much for being courageous. Hopefully her story can save somebody's life and they won't come down this road. Melissa, thank you so much for being the voice for our brothers and sisters who don't want to speak up because we have to. Education and prevention is key to solve this problem. So is there anything you're in need of we can help you with? Nah, you guys got it. You guys right. are the best. Appreciate it. AML family, drop all the positive comments you got from Melissa. She's part of the family now. We'll stay connected. Speak up, speak up. And hopefully it'll be a different picture of Melissa one day in a place, not in Kensington, but you know, somewhere comfortable. Okay, all right, that's what's up. We got a good brother holding her down. So guys, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there. Peace out.